Episode 4 of This Is Us 2 is brought to you by Minute With Mary, the best place to discover new makeup and uncover your confidence as a woman. So this is what I want you to do, guys. I want you to head on over to Facebook, good old Facebook, where I know you're all at anyway, and search the hashtag Minute With Mary and request to join my VIP group. I share tips, tricks, all sorts of wonderful things there. So head on over to MinuteWithMary.com or search the hashtag Minute With Mary to start the road to a new you. I'm not bonding with baby. I want to love him like he's my own. But every time I look at his face... (sighs) Give him his own name. What was the name of the uh, poet who used to read her? Your favorite poet. From Cranston, Rhode Island, welcome to This Is Us 2. It's a podcast dedicated to This Is Us on NBC, so sit back, relax, and let's all have a great cry. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm your host, Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I do not miss those newborn days do not miss them you don't miss the crying of the newborn days <laughs> i don't miss days. the crying i don't miss the getting up every two minutes i don't I miss, miss so much of it oh man i oof. but it's good though it's good it's good i mean ba- babies are great i love babies but wow <laughs> it was rough for you it, it was rough and it was it was especially rough and, and specifically because you my wife we, we well you went through uh postpartum depression and I remember not knowing what is going to happen with my wife if I was ever going to be able to um, move on with my wife. And if, I, she, if she was ever going to come back, um, it was too hard. It was too hard to deal with. And, uh, and it was emotionally difficult on me, even eventually propelling me into my own depression. Something that, I, that you know, we've both dealt with, obviously. And I remember getting a phone call um, from your doctor, um, the one uh, that you had when you were giving birth. And you had gone to see her and you had told her about how you were breaking down. You couldn't do simple math. You were having a hard time just being human. You didn't want to get up out of bed. It was, it was really bad. And of course, our son was crying left and right because he was colicky and he didn't ever do anything other than cry. (laughs) Uh, And I remember um, your doctor calling me saying, listen, your, your wife has, has postpartum depression and um, she's broken right now. She's broken, but it's okay because we're going to, we're going to get your wife back. She's going to become your wife again. And we're going to put all these things into play. We're going to do X, Y, and Z, and you're going to get your wife back. And I'll never forget feeling so comforted and so positive uh, about it because since you know until that point it had always been pretty negative and uh, getting that call from my doctor well your doctor really really helped and obviously Jack getting that conversation and having him tell him to go go take a nap <laughs> Good old Dr. K uh, Dr. K is I think my favorite character of this show I'm I'm pretty sure I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go there and say that so far. All right, well, let's get into the show. All right, so this episode title was Kyle. The director was Glenn Ficarra and John Requa, the guys who did the pilot mm-hmm. uh, and who are one of the main producers of this show. And the writer, as with the previous two episodes, is the showrunner Dan Fogelman. So again, once again, getting the A-listers for this episode. Cool. And I think it showed. Yeah. I think it showed. And the lemonade rating scale on a scale of one to five, one being bleh, and five being yes, it's amazing. How do you rate this episode? You know, I think I'm going to go 4.7 again. Nice. 
Uh, it wasn't a huge step down. It wasn't a huge step up from the previous episode. I feel like it was right in line with where we were, which is revealing character, revealing um, certain motivations, and also keeping up with the aesthetic that they, the high bar aesthetic that they've created. And we'll get into that in, in a little bit. But my darling, what do you got for your lemonade rating? I'm giving it the same as last episode as well, which is a 4.5. Doesn't mean that I liked it less than Blake. I just like to work in fives and zeros most of the time. <laughs> so yes, I would agree. It's the same level as last I'm, episode. I'm much more of a ninny than you are. You are. All right. Time for the GBG. What do you the got? good, the bad, and the great. So my good for this episode was when Rebecca walked into uh, William's room. He was mm-hmm. staying, of course, with with Randall, and <laughs> William looks at her and says, "You look well." <laughs> my jaw literally dropped. I did not see that coming. Mm-hmm. Um, now, my bad is this: is the fact that she's hidden this lie about his birth father mm-hmm. this entire time, and I'm really nervous because it's probably going to get out there somehow. I mean, they wouldn't put this in there if it didn't. But just knowing that she's had to keep this knowledge from her son his entire life, right? And um, how she must be feeling right now. It's never good when you get caught in a kind of place like this, guys. Lying is never the answer, and this shows you that it comes back to bite you someday, somehow. And my great is that Randall is a total Gryffindor. You're a wizard, Harry. I cannot get over this man. He tries his best to help other people at all times. He's brave going out looking for his dad. Um... And he's just trying to do the right thing, you know, doing doing favors. He said he had to kiss somebody's butt who he hated just to get his dad, his, his birth father, this this appointment. And um, he, he just won't stop. And even at the end, when they get the bad news that his birth father, William, is really not going to make it anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Um, he just wants to know more about him. I, so, I, I have a, uh, this is totally off yeah. topic. I have a question for you. Yes. I'm sitting across from you, obviously, and I'm looking at my beautiful wife. She's wearing actually a, a nice, like, satin black robe. It's very pretty, but there is a stain on her. <laughs> 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 and I tried so effing hard. Oh, my God. <laughs> to, not, to not laugh during that GBG. What the hell is that? <laughs> that was yogurt. <laughs> it looked like bird poop. <laughs> There's this giant white stain oh, against this black, goodness. like, velour material. Here I was thinking I was, like, so sexy tonight. Nope. <laughs> Straight up, plain, boring yogurt. Was it fat-free at least? Of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. Maybe it won't stain. <laughs> oh, my God. How about your GBG? What's your, what's your good, bad, great? <laughs> oh, okay. My good. Uh, the scene, the whole, the whole scene with the babies crying, and they're both, tr- they're both freaking out, and they're running up and down, and one's over here, the other one's over there. Can you get the diapers over there? I don't know where it is. And the- <laughs> survival mode. And then all of a sudden, it's just <laughs> silence, yes. and they're both sitting at the uh, at the drawer. I, I, it reminded me of us, as a matter of fact, when because you know when you have your first kid. Your world is just turned upside down. Now, take that and multiply it by three, oh right? Gosh. Now, yep. we, we only had one kid. Our kid, like I said, Reese, was very, very colicky. Like the doctor said, worst case of colic she's ever seen. You know, like it was crazy. And I remember him being so bad that the only thing that would keep him from not crying was me bouncing on a yoga ball mm-hmm. for hours. And my, my core, oh my God, Tony Horton would have been- Very proud. He would have been wicked proud. <laughs> not, not so much now, but at the time, I was, woof, man, so the- I was in shape because of my kid. And actually, I, I remember actually uh, falling asleep, sitting up, rocking his baby rocker in our room while you slept- at like three in the morning. <laughs> that so seemed, that was bad. It definitely pulled at all parents' heartstrings. Oh yeah. So you could I could totally relate to that. The bad you know, that scene when the plane lands from Kevin going to New York and then as soon as it touches down, Cape jumps up and she's like, Oh, it's okay. He's okay, he landed. I was like, All right, come on. See, but I'm down with that. I like I like I get it they're twins but this isn't Luke and Leia they don't have the force okay I don't know. some twins do it's weird some people have this why would they say there's a twin thing and i and i know that they even put that little this, that little thing in there to help you know reason it when they're like oh yeah when i hurt my arm he cried out in pain 10 miles away i was like yeah i don't i'm not buying that Blake do you know any twins no i don't 
I do, and they've got weird things. They've got some know. like some weird psychic stuff. Tr- trust me, <laughs> Just, they do. I was not not a fan of that. And the great, the absolute great was the montage of William meeting Randall's mother. Yes, uh, I mean, stunning. And this this right here is the definition of show me, don't tell me. Mm-hmm. I know already that William was a drug addict. I know that he had problems with the baby and all that other stuff. But getting that physical representation Mm -hmm. of what William was doing when he met the mother and how they were both in good shape. They were both like normal. He was writing poetry. Yes. And she was beautiful. And he was this, you know, strapping young man. Mm -hmm. And they're meeting on the bus and they're both sitting on the bus and you could see. As time went along, they became a little, you know, little, a little bit less. more scraggly. Yes, and and nothing epitomized that even more, or at at more than his writing. The in, writing was so brilliant. Oh my effing god! Show me, don't tell me. That is a writer's job when they're writing good television. And they and did done. This good. was the epitome of like, oh my. Goodness, that was great. They thank did you. done good. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Dan Fogelman for that. My love, what do you got for the rest of this episode? Well, we cannot go through this episode with talking about Boyfriend of the Year. And okay. by Boyfriend of the Year, <laughs> I mean Toby. Toby continues to crush it mm-hmm. in every single one of these first three episodes. This, of course, is when he uh, hears Kate singing and decides to get a limo and get a red carpet and takes her to the nursing home to have her sing. And even after all of this, of course, she ends up having to go and leave because she needs to go help Kevin. Mm-hmm. But Toby really d- kind of just drops the truth bomb on her Mm -hmm. like what is it gonna take i know you guys have this twin thing i know you have this tight relationship i know you work for him but come on i've done every single little thing possible to be a good boyfriend here and i just feel like i'm playing second fiddle so i loved that not only toby was amazing and sweet and caring and outgoing and those wonderful like really kindling the fire moments Mm -hmm. but that he was also able to be honest he's he's not so Uh, infatuated with Kate that he doesn't want to rock the boat. Mm -hmm. And I like that a lot about him. And I feel like people um, in this, in this show, um, they're really able to, because we get to see the different dynamics with the different characters. It's interesting to see who they are able to be the most true with, Mm -hmm. you know, Kate obviously is able to be that mostly with Kevin. Um, And she goes and sees him and tells him how she's nervous about all this. And of course I'd have to come see you. And, you know, he had done all these wonderful things for me and I still don't get it. But, and I loved that Kevin let her go. Mm -hmm. That was almost one of my GBGs for the good or the great. Well, he didn't even let her go. He pushed her out, really. He fired her. Yeah. I mean, just get the hell out of here. Yeah. Like, but what it, are you doing answering the phone when you're making out about to get <laughs> your jiggy on in a closet with your boyfriend? But it makes me wonder if Kevin would have said this before he hit rock bottom, you know? Was he the type of guy that would have done this for Kate? Or do you think that he's kind of coming to this whole, wow, I'm 36. And he's really trying to find deep self-worth. Um, so that's I'm, I'm interested to see Kevin's journey. I'm interested to see if he was just this pretty boy, selfish. Because that's kind of what I've... He, I feel like he's becoming deep in these episodes. But I feel like he wasn't always that way. Especially with how he treated Randall. Yeah, my take on it so far is... He wanted to be popular, and mm-hmm. he would do whatever it took to be popular. So, when you say would he have done that prior to hitting rock bottom, I'm going to say no. That's what I think too. I, I'm going to say no because yeah. because it just feels that way to mm-hmm. me. Just from, like how I said, it feels that way from when Randall was far away. It just felt like that to me. Um, one thing that Toby said that kind of freaked me out. Was he's like I, I can't play second banana to anybody or to your brother. <laughs> Listen, Why I, don't, I, I'm a man of many words, yeah. many, many, many nonsensical phrases. Yeah, many. <laughs> I've never heard the phrase second banana, and yeah, I loved it because I was like, well, that you know that explains a lot. <laughs> so I, I was just like, second, ban- really, really, okay. I mean, like I know we're all on Cindy Lauper uh, territory here, and that's fine, but what are we doing here? <laughs> 
The scene with Jack, the one that you mentioned that you related to oh. with him in the hospital, seeing Dr. K doing the, you know, visit, mm -hmm. <laughs> which generally the mom does at about six weeks, which by the way, six weeks is just way too long. If someone's having postpartum depression, you sh that's another, that's another tale for another yeah. time, but <laughs> people should be seeing their doctors every single week. Um, but I loved how Jack took these three babies. I love how Jack is a hands-on dad. Mm -hmm. It's not the babies are Rebecca's responsibility. You see that in that montage of the babies crying and he's in there too, helping her as much as he can. So I really like how hands-on of a father he is. And then how he is able to be honest with the doctor mm -hmm. about how his wife is broken. That was great. I, and when he said to her, I think she's, I, I think she's broken. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> It's so simple. The writing of this show continues to really, really impress me. Mm -hmm. So far, the, I mean, the, we, we've discussed last episode, the visuals of this show. Yes. Also impressive. But the writing is, I think she's broken. It, it's just so simple. It's so effective. And real. And real. Real. Like, there are so many shows out there where you sit there. It makes me think of Dawson's Creek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you sit there and you go, 15-year-olds don't speak like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't form sentences or paragraphs like that at all. Whereas this show, that's something that you would have said. Right. And, and I think... You know, each show like Dawson's Creek, you know, there's a place for it. Like even Gilmore Girls. Like Gilmore Girls, I love yes. myself some Gilmore Girls. Yes. Lorelai and I, we're besties, right? But people don't speak like that. But that's the entertaining part of that show. Correct. You know, that's Correct. That's, that's the shtick. That's the shtick, and that's what they get. That's the, what they get away with. Mm -hmm. And I remember when the marketing came out for this show, I was like, oh, my God, for, for This Is Us. I was like, oh, my God, really? You're, you're going to try to pull up my heartstrings every single episode. And you're claiming that this is us, you know, in quotes. But it's a television show. Shut the hell up. But I got to tell you, so far, three episodes in, I've related to so many yes. different variations of each character. And, you know, I was trying to think of... You know, who is your who is your inroad into the show? Like, who can you watch the show? Who do you love right away? Well, you know, but like, who's your way into the show, right? Like, because when you watched, like, uh, when you watched Lost. We have to go back, Kate. You know, Jack Shepard was Superman, yes. right? He's the doctor. He's everything. Sawyer was the badass, mm -hmm. you know, um, and Kate was the was the criminal and, and all that stuff. You know, sorry, spoiler alert. <laughs> But Hurley was the one that was like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Um, I was taking a look at the manifest and some people aren't on here and they're in with us and we're on an island. What's going on here? Right. So like the relatable character, the just right. general you guy. Yeah. Who is your way into the show? Uh, and I think so far, and I wanted to get your opinion on this. So far for me, it's Toby. And I know I just I, I went on in on Jack, and I, I do like Jack as a character, and I can relate to him. But you know, Kate has a a, a a very serious weight issue that not everybody can be on board with. Uh, Jack and uh, and Rebecca are, have three babies. Not everybody can relate to that. Kevin is. A movie star. Randall is a high-powered uh, day trader in New York. But Toby is just a regular dude. He's just a guy who shows up and likes a girl. And he sees the glass half full. Right. And like, what, like, do you think that's fairly accurate? Or do you think that... Or do you think you, fi you find yourself relating to another character better? I, I think this show is that you find yourself relating to a different character in each episode. And at least for me, sure, that's what's been surprising for me is in the first episode, it was one person. The second episode was another. In this episode, I related with Randall because mm -hmm. I would be doing a lot of the same things he was doing. That's right. why I said I, he's a Gryffindor. He's, but I, that's one of the things that I'm finding so fun about this series right. is that these different experiences, whether you can personally relate to them or not, you might have someone who close to you has gone through something very similar, but because all these people come from different um, places and they have different struggles, it's interesting to see 
Toby is Toby is the Hurley. Toby mm-hmm. is the Hurley where it's like I'm never I'm not gonna not like you. You have no real flaws. You know, you're just the easy person that if I don't like someone else in the show, I can still like you. Yep. Um, he's kind of. He's pure so far. Yeah. You know, he really is pure so far. So that way, if you do find faults in other people, you can still laugh with Toby when you're sad or upset with other people. So <laughs> I love I, what he was like. He's like, you just hulked out on the skinny chick or the that. fat chick. He's like, it's okay, everybody. Bruce Banner's Bruce back. Banner, yeah. Like, I know that was previous episode, but that was hysterical. So good. So good. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I, I do want to mention Randall one real quick about, about something. I, I have a theory, and the theory is this. There is absolutely no fracking chance he doesn't find out that that his mother knew William I in advance. There's I agree. There's no chance that stays a secret. And now I feel like it's going to move quickly because William has a has a ticking clock on him for how long he's going to uh, live now that the cancer's metastasized. Right. So I really feel like, oh man, this is going to get going soon. And Rebecca, who we've seen in the past two episodes in such a great light, you know, just as the mother, but then also in the second episode, having to call Jack out on his drinking, yep. being such a great parent. Now we're able to see her be humanized. Sure. And it's karma. You do something wrong. It's going to come back to bite oh, you. Course. And so we know that this is going to come back to bite her soon. And it's going to be interesting to see how that dynamic as an adult when you really see that your parent isn't a superhero yeah. and they've done something wrong by you to see how, you know, when and how um, Randall does react to this. I agree. It, it, and here's another theory for you. It absolutely is going to be Rebecca telling Randall. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, because she has to pay for that choice. She yes. has to, she has to have the consequence of that choice, and it gives her um, an arc. Really, it gives her something where she wanted to keep a secret. She did for all that time, and it will subvert your expectation because you, you as a viewer, are thinking it's going to be William. William's going to say something because you know th- that is what it is. But it will subvert the expectation of uh, of Rebecca doing it. Just like even even. Uh, the role reversal, mm-hmm. like the the subversion of the roles for between Jack and Rebecca, mm-hmm. where Rebecca comes home, it's Jack sitting in front of you know the kids yes. saying, "Where the hell were you? Thought you left I thought you to went to you Mexico. Were dead, <laughs> you know, like." <laughs> and she's like, "Yeah, I wouldn't have went. To Me- I would not have went to gone to Mexico without you, you know, like that whole thing." It was there was a there was a, a role reversal there because usually, you know, in, in the typical I, television world, it's it's the woman staying home being like, where the hell have you been? Well, that's what been? had happened in the previous episode. Exactly. You know, I saw it as more of an even playing field and when she talked about how sad she was over the loss of their baby and how she can't stop thinking about that baby and then he said, me too. Mm-hmm. I just thought that 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 spoke so much about all this, in addition to the fury, <laughs> not the fury, but just the fast craziness of having newborns and three newborns and, and breastfeeding issues, but to also know that they're dealing with such a deep, deep loss mm-hmm. um, really was such a wonderful thing to see as they bonded. And speaking of these newborns and breastfeeding, one thing that I do have to take an issue with this episode is Rebecca goes on this bus searching all over the place for Shakespeare, Okay, mm-hmm. goes to the hospital looking for him. Um, I love how the bus driver knew right away. <laughs> he's I'm like, looking oh, yeah. for <laughs> a skinny Afro-American. And he's like, yes. I'm like, really? There's just one? There's just one. Really? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to believe you on that. Okay. Um, so she's she's walking all over town, searching for him, finds him, somehow finds his apartment, all this kind of stuff, and comes home later in the day. And all I kept thinking, and I even said this to you, I said, what the heck? She's a breastfeeding mom of triplets. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. How, how is she not? How, like, how is she not leaking, leaking everywhere? all over herself? Like, I, had that been me. It would be as, Lake Superior. Oh my God. I would have walked in there and not just been like, hey, honey, had I gone to Mexico, I'd have taken you with me. I would have been like, hand me a baby. <laughs> I need to nurse. So that was the one thing that. It would be look like you went to the gym. <laughs> That was the one thing where I was like, nope, unless she has a pump in her in her pack, her little like purse right there. I don't know how she's going to okay. do that. Hashtag plot hole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's one worry I do have with this show, and I want to get your opinion on it. I, I worry that 
the show will rely on a plot twist per episode of some sort mm. to man- emotionally like manipulate you. Um, and I, I think it worked really well in these episodes, like the first three episodes. The first one with uh, your boy Miguel. Uh, I'm sorry. No, oh not God, th- he's not my boy. The first one being the the time jump, and <laughs> yes. then the second one being your boy Miguel, oh, and then yeah. and then the third one being this uh, that you know th- there was a name change and Rebecca knew William prior. Yes, you know, well not prior, but d- during his his birth. Um, I worry that it's going to be like that every episode, and I and I I don't want that because I just want them to tell a good story mm-hmm. without having to manipulate you and being like. <gasps> Gotcha. See, you thought this, but it really wasn't. It was this. But on the flip side, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna counteract that because I agree with you. I don't want it to become like cheesy that every episode right. you go, oh my god, no way. But on the flip side, because this is a time jumping show, it is going to fill in little holes, and there are going to be questions, and we are going to be surprised because life is full of surprises. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of characters in this show, so I, we're bound to probably see one every episode. <laughs> yeah, probably. Pro- I, I just I hope they. Uh, let me put it this way then. I hope they don't go full banana land. Uh, and you like that? See, I came off of. The, I like that, the I Toby. Off, yeah. I I got gotcha. you. I hope they don't go full banana land and have like this "I'm your father" type reveal every episode. You know what I mean? I do, Luke. Yeah, I hope that it's. I am your father. I hope they range. I hope they they um. They range in in degrees of of surprise and how much they affect the plot. Um, so we'll see. We we will absolutely see. One more thing about Randall, I wanted to uh, talk about was, <laughs> you know, R- R- Randall is is a great guy and he's a total Gryffindor, like you said. And so far from what the show has shown us, it's given us no evidence other than the fact that he is a pretty good guy. And all he does is just do his best to take care of his family, uh, his kids, his wife, and 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 supply a great life for them. Correct. And it's funny because William is the is technically his father. Uh, he's not daddy, but he's his father. His birth father. And there's a distinct difference there. I mean, you, you and I both know. I think every, hashtag fact, not opinion. There's a difference between daddy and father. I'll say birth father, but yeah. Okay. So, but it's Randall taking care of William like he's the dad. Yes. And, you know, William, as soon as some chips are are put down, he immediately falls into this self-wallowing, like, miserable... I knew I shouldn't have done this. And, uh, and, and and maybe that's an effect because he just has never had to care for anything other than his cat, and which maybe is why he goes back to care for his cat, so his cat Clooney, uh, so distinctly. Mm-hmm. But having Randall take care of his dad the way that he is uh, is great because it's something that Randall should have had but didn't and now has the, has the option to... Um, to fulfill for his father. Yeah. Uh, not his dad, but his father. Blake, do you have any final thoughts about this episode? Yeah, I do. I think the main theme for this episode, like last episode was reckoning. Mm-hmm. I think the main theme for this episode has been identity. Identity being realizing who you are or finding out who you are, mm-hmm. right? Uh, th- for identity, this one for Kate was realizing who she is going to be without her brother. Her brother takes off to New York, and but still has that connection with him. Still, ha- when he lands, she does jump up, yes. right? But when she says to Kevin, "I don't know who I'm going to be without you," Kevin says, "You're going to love her." Mm-hmm. Right, and even Kevin, his identity is now completely shot. He is an complete different person. He's an older actor who is going, and he's going to do Broadway. Hopefully, just hopefully, he's just going to (laughs) show up in New York, and hopefully, he's got a job. Right, Uh, Randall with uh, himself, Mm -hmm. his name was Kyle, and it was changed, and it was changed based on not because his family decided to do so, because it was advice from his own father. And then dealing with his father as his as his parent almost, uh, and uh, William dealing with himself as 
uh, a person who is going to suffer from cancer Mm -hmm. and it's metastasized and his end is coming. And that is that Jack and Rebecca are struggling with their, their identities as parents. Rebecca struggles with postpartum depression, struggling with the idea of having a baby that isn't necessarily hers. Mm Mm-hmm. She doesn't know what she is. He doesn't know what he is. Uh, uh, Jack doesn't know what he is. All he knows is that he's doing the best that he can. And even Rebecca saying, uh, talking about a stranger, it, she the baby feels like a stranger to me. Yes. And Jack says, it's okay. I was a complete stranger and I took to your breast too. <laughs> you know, so this whole, this whole episode um, is people struggling or coming to grips with their identity, in my opinion. How about you, my darling? I am just thankful that the identity of one of my most beloved characters is not Dudley. Instead, they chose the last name Randall. That's my final thought. Because it was going to be Dudley Kyle, right? Wasn't that, wasn't that what Dudley, it was? Or the, Kyle Dudley? The author's name was Dudley Randall. Oh, Dudley Randall, yeah. And so I love to the guy, just William just handed her that book, and then she got home and showed Jack it, and he never said, um, where's this book from? Mm-hmm. Or, where were you all day? Or, oh, you want to name him Dudley? <laughs> they just both decided, Randall. Yeah, that <laughs> was down. the way to go. <laughs> we want to thank you all so much for listening to this episode of This Is Us 2. Here's a fun thing. You've been listening. And you're liking it because you're still here, right? It's the end of the show. You're still here. Well, we want to take a moment to ask you to possibly write us a rating or a review on your favorite podcast app. I want to give a shout out to AL1208, who says that this is a very fun show to listen to. I've been obsessing with from the beginning through Marion Blake. You couldn't have picked a better show. So thanks so much, AL1208. And guys, here's a great way to let other people know that you're listening. You can screenshot your phone while you're listening to the podcast and share it in something as simple as an Instagram story or your Facebook stories. Mm -hmm. This will come up in your newsfeed and we'll let others know. So thanks so much. My name's Mary. My name's Blake. And this is us too.